In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Ave Maria. So pleased to see so many of you here today, here in Five Precious Wounds. Today we gather because we want to honour Our Lady. Today I want to present to you Our Lady, who is the Ark of the Covenant. And she's mentioned so often in the Bible. I wonder, have you ever come across Mary in the Old Testament? She doesn't actually appear, does she? Mary only appears in the New Testament. However, there are many, many references to Mary in the Old Testament. In fact, all the prophets of the Old Testament saw Mary's coming. It's just a wonderful gift to all of us. For us to know our Bible, it's extremely important. As Catholics, we should know what the Bible contains. The Bible is the Word of God. The Bible, as we know it today, was in fact put together by the Catholic Church. And when you look at the Bible, you'll see it contains the history of God's work saving us, the history of salvation. Sometimes when we open the Bible, we don't quite know what it all means look at the Old Testament you'll you'll find messages of wars, of triumphs, of all kinds of things going on. But if you actually read the Bible from cover to cover, we soon begin to see there is a pattern emerging. After Adam and Eve sinned, God is not content to leave us to our own devices. He knows that when we are left to ourselves, we tend to make a mess of things. God said, he promised to send us a savior. Our lady is mentioned as the woman whose offspring would crush the head of the serpent in the book of Genesis. So already Mary is beginning to be mentioned. Everything is working towards her coming. Well, you know that if you continue reading from Genesis, eventually you'll come to a great figure one of the patriarchs called Abraham, a very old man, and his wife Sarah. And God promises them a child and land, and they get it. God gives them what they desire. In their old age, God gives them their son Isaac. You know that Isaac, the name means laughter. I mean, imagine if you're 98 years old and God gives you a son. I'm sure you'd laugh as well with joy. Isaac, this wonderful son of Abraham, was then married. He had 12 sons of his own. And one of those sons was Joseph. He used to have amazing dreams. He had the gift of prophecy and he used to annoy the hell out of his 11 brothers. And so they threw him down a well. And then they sold him as a slave. He was taken off into Egypt, as you know. This is all in the Bible. You can read it. And there in Egypt, as a slave, he he worked his way up through God's providence. He became the prime minister of Egypt. And through his wisdom, he was able to bring Egypt into a great place. Egypt became a place of salvation for the whole of the district. In fact, We know that Joseph's 11 brothers came to live in Egypt with their father, Jacob. And there in Egypt, they flourished. The people, the sons of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob became numerous to to such an extent that after many, many years, the Pharaoh who invited them into Egypt forgot their origins, they forgot about Joseph, who was a very clever administrator. They forgot all the good things that Jacob's sons had done for Egypt. And they soon made the Israelites into slaves. And you'll remember how the Israelites were oppressed by the Egyptians and they cried out to God in their need. 
God heard their voice and he sent Moses. Moses became the great liberator who freed the Israelites from Egypt and they entered into the desert. And they were in the desert for 40 years where they were fed with manna, with quails, with water from the rock. And finally they entered into the promised land and a kingdom was established, the kingdom of David, until we, we come right up to 2,000 years ago. From the kingdom of David, the covenant, the promise was fulfilled, the covenant made to Adam and Eve. Jesus was born, son of David, and he is the one who has freed us and continues to free us. So you see, this is all in the Bible, from the Old Testament to the New. But I haven't yet really mentioned Mary very much. If we look at the Bible in greater detail, and if we study the Bible and we meditate and reflect on the Word of God, what we begin to see is that the, the, the news of the Bible is our life, is your life, my life. Because to a certain extent, all of us as sinners find ourselves in a desert, a deserted place, because sin causes us to be cut off from everything. We become arid and dry. And God wants to save us from the desert. He wants to save us from slavery to sin. The Israelites, when they were in Egypt, were slaves, and God freed them. And slavery is a good image of what it means to sin. When we sin, we're in slavery. God frees us, he liberates us. But in the desert, we can continue to sin. We grumble against God all the things that he provides for us. You know, the Egyptians, they provided the Israelites with onions and leeks and garlics. And the Israelites, when they were in the desert, when they got very hungry, they began to imagine all of the wonderful food that they left behind, even though they were slaves. They wanted to go back to Egypt, to go back to when they were slaves. And this can be us sometimes, that sometimes, because we get a bit fed up with God, God, you're not answering my prayers. You're not doing what I want, God. We begin to grumble and complain, and it seems as if we want to go back to, be, to becoming sinners. God brought the Israelites with Moses to Mount Sinai, and there on Mount Sinai, God gave his people his word, the Ten Commandments. You remember your Bible stories, yeah? The Ten Commandments, the word of God. You know that the Israelites hadn't, didn't see the Ten Commandments when they disobeyed God, when they made the golden calf, and they worshipped the golden calf. Moses was up the mountain, and God said to Moses, your people have turned away from the, 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 the path that I've led them to. And Moses, he said, why do you call them my people, Lord? They're your people. God said, I'm going to destroy them and make of you a great nation. And Moses said, don't do that, because people will then say, you don't have any power. Moses, he prayed and interceded for the, for the Israelites. But you know what Moses did? He took those ten commandments, the ten stones, and he broke them, he smashed them. This was almost like an act of mercy, because he said the Israelites were not ready yet for the ten commandments. But eventually, the ten commandments were given again, Moses brought them down. What happened to those Ten Commandments? They were placed in a very important box. And this box contained not just the Ten Commandments, but also some of the manna that they were given, and also Aaron's rod. And this ark, it's called, the box was called the Ark of the Covenant, accompanied the Israelites through their wanderings in the desert. And if you read the book of Numbers, it says that whenever this ark, this box, was carried, it was always covered with a blue veil. A blue veil. Now, where, we, where have we heard that before? A blue veil. Many of the saints and mystics who have seen apparitions of Our Lady have testified that she's dressed with a blue veil. And who was it that contained within her womb the Word of God? Our Lady, Mary. And just like Aaron's rod that flourished again, you know Aaron's rod was dead, but it came to life. Who was it that came back to life? The fruits of the womb of Mary. And who was it that accompanied 
the Israelites in their wanderings in the desert? Well, the Ark of the Covenant. And who is it that accompanies you and me in the desert of our lives? It is Mary who accompanies us and calls us to stay faithful to God. When the Ark of the Covenant was, was, was going through the desert, the Holy Spirit was, was seen to be coming upon the Ark, just in the same way the Holy Spirit came upon Mary. And this is so important for us to recognize the role that Mary played in the Old Testament, and also as she is so important in the New Testament. Our Lady who accompanies us through the desert into the Promised Land. And even in the Promised Land, when the Kingdom of David was established, the Covenant, the Ark of the Covenant, was placed inside the Temple. And it's there that Jesus appears. I wonder today, if I were to ask you, what is your desert experience? What is it that causes you to wander for years and years and years? What is it that you want to be freed from in your life? We only need to ask Mary. Mary, come to lead us, come to guide us, come to teach us. There are many people who find themselves slaves to sin. Perhaps they are baptized as Christians, in a sense, liberated from slavery to sin, no longer in Egypt. But still, even as baptized Christians, we can find ourselves slaves to habitual sins. And those sins can be many, it can be gluttony, anger, lust, and so on, envy, all the different, all the seven capital sins. And sometimes when we sin, we can feel terribly distant from God, how distant we are, how we do not know God's love. But even in those situations, we know that we can turn back to God through Our Lady, who says, do not despair, trust in me, trust in the Son of God. And this is the message that Our Lady gave to the children of Fatima. You know very well that this year is the centenary, the anniversary of the year in which the guardian angel of Portugal appeared to those three dear children Lucia, Francisco, and Jacinta. And he prepared them, 100 years ago in Portugal, Fatima, he prepared them for the coming apparitions of our Blessed Mother the following year. So these two years are very special for the Church, the anniversaries, the centenaries of Our Lady of Fatima. The Virgin Mary appeared six times to the children of, of Fatima. And she asked them to pray especially for sinners and for the conversion of sinners and to pray the rosary. We know that Our Lady appeared as Our Lady of the Rosary. And she said, pray the rosary, do penance, because the world is lost, the world is in exile, the world is going through the desert. The world is lost, the world has apostatized, the world is worshipping the golden calf as the Israelites did in Egypt all those years ago. And Our Lady, the Ark of the Covenant, comes to guide us, to show us the way back home, the back, back to the Father. S soon after we know that two of the children died. And in 1925, Lucia, by this time, she was now a religious sister, the Order of St. Dorothy, our Lady and the Child Jesus appeared to Lucia in her bedroom. And our Lord Jesus, he pointed to something that Our Lady was holding in her hand. What was it? It was a heart crowned with thorns. And Our Lord said to Lucia, can you not help take off the thorns, the crown of, of thorns? Can you not offer some sacrifice, some prayer, to alleviate the sufferings of Our Lady? And in fact, it was Our Lady who then spoke. And these are the words that she said. She said, my daughter, look at my heart, encircled with the thorns with which ungrateful men pierce it 
at every moment by their blasphemies and ingratitude. Do you at least try to console me and announce in my name that I promise to assist at the hour of death with the graces necessary for salvation all those who on the first Saturday of five consecutive months go to confession and receive Holy Communion, recite the rosary and keep me company for 15 minutes while meditating on the mysteries of the rosary with the intention of making reparation to me. So this was the, this was the request of Our Lady and her son Jesus, that the world should turn back to God through the Immaculate One, through her Immaculate Heart, that through Our Lady we can consecrate the world and atone for the terrible blasphemies that are made against Our Lady's Immaculate Heart. You know the blasphemies very well. Why five consecutive Saturdays? Because of the five blasphemies. And I'm going to read to you these blasphemies. For blasphemies against her Immaculate Conception. For blasphemies against her perpetual virginity, before, during and after birth. For blasphemies against her divine maternity, maternity of Jesus, and against her spiritual motherhood, the motherhood of all Christians, not just Catholics, all Christians. For the neglect of imbuing children with a knowledge and love of the Immaculate Mother of God. And for offences against statues and holy images of Mary. You know, we, we don't worship statues. We honour Mary through the images that remind us of Our Lady. And yet so many people have defaced the image of Our Lady. So these are the five blasphemies against the Immaculate Heart of Mary. And they are very, very similar to the sins that the Israelites made in the desert. They're the same sins that are committed day in, day out, throughout the world. And perhaps maybe, unknowingly, we might even be complicit in some of these sins. And this is why we need the Ark of the Covenant. We need Mary, the new Ark, to be with us, to accompany us, to guide us through the desert of sin. That she may allow the Holy Spirit to dwell with us as well. We know that the Holy Spirit is the Lord, the giver of life, and the one who forgives sins. And it's only by the triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, the Ark of the Covenant, that the world can be saved. The devotions, the, the five First Saturday devotions, are very, very simple. You can even do it at home if you want to. It's better to do it in the church. We do it here on the first five Saturdays. And we just need to, to, to be in a state of grace. So we go to confession, either day before, day after, within the eight days. We go to Holy Communion as soon as we can, preferably on the Sunday afterwards or the Saturday itself. We pray the Rosary, one of the mysteries, and we meditate for 15 minutes on some aspect of, of the Rosary, perhaps the whole of the mysteries, or just one of them. And that's all we do. That's the absolute bare minimum. Our Lady has promised so many graces both to ourselves and also to those to whom we, we make atonement for sins. So perhaps I'm going to ask you now, are you ready to allow the Ark of the Covenant to guide you through the desert of sin, to lead you to a place of safety, to the kingdom of God? And if this request, if this invitation resounds in your hearts, I invite you to drop your barriers and to allow the Immaculate Heart of Mary to envelop you with her love. And today, as we continue with our devotions, I invite you to place into the Immaculate Heart of Mary all the sufferings, all the sorrows that you have experienced in your life, and all the people that you want to pray for, not only for your family, but also for the people of this city, London, also people in the world, people who are refugees in Syria, all the people who are victims of war. We place all these people who are victims of the consequences of man's sin against the Immaculate Heart. We place them all into her tender and loving heart. May the Ark of the Covenant, Our Lady, accompany us to the Kingdom of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Ave Maria.